This is part 93 of SQL Server tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss creating server scoped DDL triggers. This is continuation to part 92, so please watch part 92 before proceeding. Here we have a database scoped trigger. Notice next to the on keyword we have specified the scope as database. And if you look at what this trigger is doing, it's preventing users from creating, altering or dropping a table. So I have this exact same code already typed here. I'm going to execute this create trigger statement within the context of sample DB database. So this trigger will be now created in that database. And if we try to create a table within the sample DB database, the trigger should prevent us from doing that. Notice we get the error message. Now this trigger is present only within sample DB database because this is a trigger that is scoped to that database. I have another database here HRDB. Now if I try to create a table within that database will I be allowed to do that? Let's say. So when I execute this create table statement in the context of HRDB notice that we are able to create the table without any problem. Now let's say for some reason even in this database we want to prevent users from creating, altering or dropping tables. Now one way to achieve this is by creating this same trigger even in this HRDB database. This approach is okay if we have just one or two databases. Now imagine if we have 100 databases on this instance of SQL Server and in all those 100 different databases we want to prevent users from creating, altering or dropping tables. Now in this case definitely creating you know the same trigger in all those 100 different databases is not a right approach and it's not right for two reasons. One, it is tedious and error prone. Two, maintainability is going to be a nightmare because if we have to change the logic in the trigger then we will have to do that change in all the hundred different databases which again is going to be tedious and error prone. So this is when server scope triggers are going to come in handy. And creating server scope triggers is very similar to creating database scoped triggers. All you have to do is change the scope from database to all server. So let's create a server scoped trigger. First, let's delete this database scoped trigger that we already have in our sample DB database. So database scoped triggers can be found in that database under programmability folder. You will have database triggers folder. So let's go ahead and delete that in our database scoped trigger. And I'm going to give this trigger a meaningful name. Let's call this server scoped trigger and we want its scope to be server so we have to specify the scope as all server. Now let's go ahead and execute this create trigger statement. Notice we are executing this within the context of sample DB database but this trigger will not be created in that sample DB database. So we are within the sample DB database so if I refresh this database triggers folder and expand it. Notice that we can't find this trigger there. So our obvious next question is where is this trigger created then? This actually created the server level. So here we have the server objects folder. If we expand that we have got triggers folder and when we expand that we can find our server scoped trigger there. Alright now let's try to create a table within sample DB database. We should still be prevented from doing that. Look at that it happens. And if you look at the HRDB database, we already have created a test table inside that. So let's see if that table is there. So the table is still there. Now if you look at what this trigger is doing, it's also preventing users from dropping a table. So if we try to drop the table, so let's write a command for that, drop table the table name is test, we should be prevented from doing that. Notice we are in the context of HRDB database. Look at that, we still get the error. Now here we are using a SQL command to do that. Now if I try to delete this table using the graphical user interface of SQL Server Management Studio, will I be allowed to do that? Let's say. So when I try to delete it by right clicking on that and selecting delete, and when I click OK, notice that we still get an error message. And if you look at what the error message is, it says drop failed for table test. And here is the message, the transaction ended in the trigger. We get the same error message, irrespective of whether you use a graphical user interface or a SQL command, you will still not be able to do that because the trigger is preventing it. All right. Now, 
to create a trigger you know a server scope trigger we use create trigger statement and we just specify the scope as all server now if you want to alter this trigger all you do is instead of create you use alter and if you want to disable the trigger then we use disable command so disable trigger trigger name and we have to specify the scope since this is server scoped trigger we have to specify on all server so when we execute this notice that command is completed successfully that means the trigger is disabled and we should be able to create a table look at that when I try to execute this within the sample DB I am allowed and if you want to enable it back simply use enable and if you want to drop it simply use drop thank you for listening and have a great day